That's right. Still crickets. The nation of crickets. a global cricket infestation. Kind of a shame. Given all the examples of what we should be doing, how to do it, and we don't step up and do it. The crickets are the meek. <laughs> they're supposed to inherit the earth, but that's not the type of meek we're supposed to do. We tend to believe a lot of nonsense. Again, I, here I am. I was going to talk and talk, and then I think, why am I even talking here? Do people really understand? Do they think they, they reinterpret what I'm saying? Do they then not do anything with it? Do they then think that what they're not doing is how they integrate with how they support a stopping the problem? Uh, I don't know. I looked around, and I've been looking and looking and looking, and I still see no one knows what to do. Everyone complains, but no one seems to know what to do. Come behind the woodshed every week to offer things to begin to look and to begin to enter into, and examples of how we have been successful. And either not, not much response, or uh, improper response, or people prejudicing themselves and just determining that I'm uh, trying to support the system in some way. <laughs> nothing, it, nothing I offer allows that. But no one listens long enough or deep enough. And as I look at this and continue to look at it, that's really not going to cut it. The people who are moving every day are going to take this thing away from people while they complain. Now, that said, there's a few people out there that do things. The problem is, as I've been seeing it, I don't see what we call victories today as victories. And there's another story here about that. Because when you look inside the cases, and I read a few of them to you, and I'm wondering, I was going to do it on this first story, but I decided against reading because I don't know if, uh, if it really matters to a lot of people. You can read this stuff yourself. I guess I could bring my opinions on what I think the interpretation is and then counter to that how it really should have been. And I suppose that's somewhat valuable for those that are going to engage this. But for the most part, I wonder how much how much do I do that uh, relative to getting your people maybe keep talking about how, how terrible it is and maybe you finally, finally, there's a straw somewhere that breaks the camel's back. Not that I want to break a camel's back. But these metaphors, I don't know. But anyway. There's standards that are being applied to us. And if we don't understand those, we won't address the condition against us at all, if certainly. When we know better, we can apply better. And the more we know about it, the more we can apply as a conversation. It just comes out of us. It, it's hard when you're looking up the hill than when you're up at the hill looking down relative to any subject matter that you have some, can I say, mastery over, where you start to understand the condition. And you can almost predict what's going on. As you, you can hear, I, I do that pretty regularly. It's not because, no, I don't have a crystal ball. It, there's just things that dynamic in the world. And you start to key into that. You don't do it with your opinions, though. And you don't do it because you think you know. And you don't do it because you do think, you do know somewhat, but you don't kind of respond and integrate with the problem. And that's where the rub comes from a lot of people that will come in and listen uh, only partially. They'll make a determination, I'm saying, engage this thing and get inside the system. If you listen very carefully, I'm saying the system communicates in a certain way. You learn that communication style, and you defeat them by not engaging them within that framework. And we do this all the time. We just have to find out what the reality and the truth is underneath the cover the ongoing extortion, which could be the system itself, which I've told you as well. Why would you go into a system, as most people have any intelligence will, tell, will kind of can say I'm doing, why would you walk into a system you know is an occupying condition and try to argue with that? No, you don't. So anybody who stops listening at that point isn't listening at all and is useless to yourself, let alone others. But you can make a bad, uh, bad flavor in people's mouths because everyone else seems to half listen. And I'm kind of off my point here. Just I start thinking about what's going on in the world uh, for you all, and it just I can go speechless at some level. But uh, I see we're not engaging. We want to talk about engaging, and then we don't. I offer things to do, and then we don't. Late in the game, we come too late all the time. They just get a bit, a bit irritated uh, at us, and, and maybe even myself, to keep thinking that if I say some more, maybe more people will respond. Some of you do. 
And then we have these things, and I want to keep pointing out, it's not just that you see with the word victory on a, page, on a website or something, or wherever you get your information. I've shown you over and over again, the victory may not even be a victory, or it's only half the story, or you are compromised in the so-called victory. And that we have to take cognizance of what those missteps or half-steps or non-fulfillments of what you all know you are entitled to, and I don't mean as an entitlement, that theory about living in peace and being left alone, that presumption of innocence and what you do, and then being being there, and that be, should be good enough, that these uh, legal system creates half-steps that don't fulfill what, your obje- uh, what the object of your rights really is, and that then moves down into a failure in you reasserting, understanding you can reassert, because then you impliedly agree to the authorita based on legal, amoral, if if that at all, uh, versus moral or man and woman making judgment with an E. What do I say the E? Well, you say there's judgment. There's a meant an E. No, there's an actual E after the J, G, an actual mental mind judgment, not the type of judgment without the E in the center of the word that they give in legal. Okay, so... These little clues are sitting there. Do I wrap a whole discussion around that? No. I'm here just to tell you that's there to make it. That's what your observance is. That's what you're looking out of the terrain. You take cognizance of all these things. You know not a word comes out of your mouth. Not a not a letter comes off the pen, the, the lead from your paper to, to paper, from pencil to paper. You just take cognizance of it. You assimilate all this. You synthesize it into. Then you start to come up with a strategy, a stratagem on how this thing is going to happen. And when I look at these things, I just see us falling short because we rely on a so-called representative, this uh, bar association, this this uh, infiltrator, this invader. And I don't say this just to call them out, folks. I've got a I've got a default judgment against what they they got. I've got a default judgment. I agree. They agree. The bar association agrees to what they do. I'm just not some voice out there about oh we can call these people out and call those people. out. And boy, I went and did it again, didn't I? See, folks, I just get right off, and it's not drama. I'm not a broadcaster. I'm just trying to, I'm a, more of a wayfarer. I'm just telling you what's what's out there to see, and you need to be infected by the information I give you enough to have you come down with the cold, the 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 the, the, the response, the immune response to stop this nonsense against you all. But let me get on to who this, what this broadcast is for you, those of you that want to get to the links. This is uh, BTW. RLM 347, as you want to get back and get the links, start from somewhere to learn and get the links for the court cases and all, whatever I'm reading from, so you can expand and you can engage. Once you see what I'm saying, you can engage your own mind. That's the important part. Engage it in the proper way, not in a prejudicial way, not in the fact, oh, I knew that, and then stop. So I get all these thoughts go through my mind. And yes, I'm feeling irritated all of a sudden. It wasn't before the broadcast until I start thinking about how far down the, how far down the path of prison, essentially, that we are. That, and I don't see most people, most everybody doesn't respond right. And then I see this thing, victory, and it just, it's like salt in the wound. Let me get to the story then so I can move on. You've got to look very carefully in what they say in these court cases in order to get the, single sentence bullet points of how you can respond in the street to stop the oppressors. I don't care what costume that they're in. At least give you a chance to think and respond better. It's beyond question now that you can be gunned down just because you uh, are said that you took an attitude by some minus 80 IQ ignorant authorita that uh, decided that they have the authority because they got a system that's going to protect them. And so that, when you see that again, you just got to go to Libra Code Article 1, and you'll see you knows them when you sees them. No, it doesn't say you knows them when you sees them. But when you look at that and you understand, you really think clearly on what it, sa- what it says, it says you knows them when you sees them. You know what you see is a crime. You don't need a further decision. You know an occupying force when you see it. You don't need any further uh, court cases or any decisions or any precedent. The nature of the dynamic in the world works on Article 1 of the Libra Code. What you see for real, without distortion, is, and there's no question about it. 
then they take, those people that do that, take that as your notice, whether they tell you that or not. Go look, go read our Libra Code Article 1. Does anybody do this when I say, no, I'm getting frustrated again. Let me get on to the story. Victory says Pennsylvania Supreme Court rules police can't force you to tell them your password. Fantastic. Like, I had to have a court case tell me that. But no, we have to have the court case. All that, this question is because that decision wasn't made. Why? Because somewhere, someplace, you haven't noticed that none of this stuff is constitutional until it goes through the, the court to be determined to be law that is subject to the Constitution, which you haven't known they've flipped over to a corporate charter, notwithstanding that. And then it's really law, but the presumption is they get to use it because there's another presumption that they're a sovereign. And you all can recite this, not all, some of you can recite it. That knowledge doesn't mean anything to you until you can apply it. And so I'm irritated. I can tell that. Don't know why. It wasn't that way before the crickets. They fire me up, folks. That's you. That's all of you that don't continue to keep that republic. And, and then he, I hear the complaints about it, right? I mean, and I see the people who champion to other people. They know what's going on, and they f go down in flames. That's probably the, really the most, most irritating to me. But at any rate, uh, victory. Pennsylvania Supreme Court rules police can't force you to tell them your password. Folks, this was a, yes, it's a big deal, but, you know, it's nothing. But so it, let's go with the big deal side. Uh, now, this is out of just Pennsylvania. You think this would have been across the country that this wouldn't even been a question. But when you got have this pressure coming from the government, which this facade of justice will tell you is the, the dynamics and balance of a democracy, it's a fraud. It's a lie. I say it. When are you presumed innocent? When? When does that come in? And I haven't found in the, the current condition you ever innocent, and that's why I say you you find yourself in a place that that's not actually working. You give lip service to it, the presumptions against you, the presumptions for them, that you know them when you see them, folks. And so those of you that listen to me, it sounds like a lot going on, and there is in a, in a way, that's why they made it, but it's not. It was supposed to be knowledge inside us that we didn't put up with this nonsense. Now, we didn't have to speak law, pages and pages and write and stuff. We were just supposed to get to the point and we can state that in a very short sentence to somebody and get to the point and get to whether or not it's true. And that's how I tell you, you can bring up your color of authority and positions without warrant are felonies. They're either extortion, in the minimum, extortion, coercion, or their conversion when both those extortion and coercion exist. Why don't I hear more people talking like this? You don't. Need, that's it, folks. That's all you have to say. That's all. Once I figured this out a bit, because uh, this has been quite a while now, so it's hard to remember that stuff, things just started to change. The dynamic and the presumptions and the burdens flipped. It wasn't a presumption for me. I put the information on the, uh, on the one who was accusing me or anybody next to me. It doesn't matter. And and so these and how I did how I started to understand that is not divorcing myself from the system of uh, legal, but engaging it as an invader and saying how do I address this invasion but survive it? And this is before they st well I did, see I came out of this because they almost shot me but so I got that early on that was three or four decades ago now I don't remember the, how many years but uh, so I got it coming out pretty quick this is, was the rule in the future and it is now. That you have to be able to communicate in certain ways. And if you divorce yourself from that, I don't see how we, as a people, anywhere, any, across the globe, how we pull out from the oppression that continually comes down and fulfills the, the, the image of uh, humanity in the future, that jackboot stomping on the face of so-called humanity. Because you you put your face down there. Those of you that say you won't get on your knees, yeah, you know, you're, you're going to get on your knees. They're going to get you on your knees. You don't even know you're on your knees. And then they'll knock you over and they'll put your boot on you. And you'll do it by your own actions and don't think you are because you're lying to yourself. But anyway, get off. See, I get irritated because I can tell what happened and what I've seen, what I've done, what I've seen people do, what works, what doesn't, and not all of it, but some of it. I'm talking about I haven't seen the totality. And if you don't understand the, derm the way they work this thing through, we don't have a chance. Your neighbor doesn't have a chance. You don't have a chance. There's nothing you can do for your neighbor. When the chips come down, you're not going to have friends. Now, you can, 
But that's not how we're wired somehow. And there is an un abiding fear, which should be another thing. When you have abiding fear and dread, you live in a terrorism. Go look at the actual word for terror. Boy, I'm off my tabs. Hey, let's get back to this. Let me read a couple paragraphs. You get the link. You can type this in the While I'm talking, you can type this in and get the, get the link at this point. But, you know, you don't maybe don't understand how to read through this thing. Or you just read it cursory or you don't start applying how they're doing it. You don't look as it, your own intelligence in the, into the open intelligence that you see, the insights of uh, an occupying force, multiple occupying powers, actually. But here, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court issued a forceful opinion today holding that the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution protects individuals from being forced to disclose the passcode to their devices to police. And, and, okay, so see, when I read that, what do you think? You, oh, great, uh, you're not supposed to give the passcode, folks. Go look and see what the government's already doing to bypass this with biometrics. And look and see what the courts have dealt with with that if you think this is a protection. But it is a knowledge. And so when I say you have to understand what you're listening to and reading for, it's applicable in certain ways and not in others. But it declares, it shows you a path to follow. And then you have around you only those things that the path allows you to protect. Because it is a narrow path. We've been told all of that. We've been told also once you that the key of knowledge will be pro precluded from you. And once you figure it out, then you'll be obstructed. You have to learn how to get around that obstruction. That's what I think I do. That's what I think the colleagues I work with do. And those that integrate with what their problem is, I think that's what they do. But, but as I'm seeing some people communicating, that's getting more and more difficult, more and more difficult. And I'm really having some question because I speak on action without jeopardy, and it's coming down. That's becoming a very thin thread. And I, you need to think about that, not to stop you. But you need to be knowing that this is more of a refined approach than what you'll probably ever, I've ever seen on the Internet generally. And it all has to do with you taking responsibility, not handing it to somewhere else, or not just giving a cursory reading of things, and not saying, oh, that sounds interesting, and then turning the channel, so to speak, or going on to something else. I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm saddened at one level because I know that people don't understand what I'm saying and they'll make excuses for it. But the point is that's the key to actually turning this thing around pretty quickly. And, and, and so in a four to three decision, this is another problem. Four to three. Oh, victory. Was that a victory, folks? You got three judges saying that you should essentially be self-incriminating. That they can extract. You're one judge away from having them reach into your brain and extract the information. So Big victory on here. Why? Because EFF.org is promoting they were involved with this to put an amicus in to advise the court a bit. And they'll hear in this case says they followed along with EFF said. I look at this and say, look how close to defeat you all are at a 4-3 to three decision that this was even a question. But here we are. In 4-3 to three decision, the Commonwealth versus Davis, the court found that disclosing a password is testimony Protected by the Fifth Amendment privilege against incrimination. It couldn't just be a felony against encroaching where they didn't have a right because you're presumed innocent. See, you, you, you're missing all that, that goodness, aren't you? No, no, we're going to go test it through and see if we can find some narrow path to go through inside the Constitution, which is not supposed to be limiting but for the government, which you don't understand elsewise. This also indicates the way they do this, you're not living in that constitutional republic and the, they're giving lip service because they're using an extension of the constitution. Notwithstanding the so-called victory it does. Because the precedents lined up the way they do that they can't embarrass themselves. And I told you this is probably the only thing protection. We look for the embarrassment that it would be and you hit that hard. You, you support your, your position of your right. But, but you also show that an answer outside of it would be contrary to the status quo. Why well, you heard one last, if you did any research, there was a recent case that stare decisis was responded to. It was wrong, but that's what they do. In fact, one judge, I think it was Gorsuch, came out against that view because it's continuing a bad decision just because it was made before. And so, 
you start learning this and you start to understand when you get in the streets and you get in front of the agencies that will eventually or potentially have the power to put you into the courts, that you learn how to make the record relative to what will have to be stated in order for you to fit into what you'll do if you get brought there. And my experience has been you do this to a cop in the street or code enforcement, they don't mess with you. They try to get you to commit, to talk too much, but they actually, they don't really mess with you. If you stay on the narrow position that's defensible and they know it. Okay, so this is an avoidance procedure that I'm asking you to all do. Stop being ignorant of what you're being told here. Stop buying in that this is a victory. Understand this is the, the, the line, the demilitarized line of what happens against us and understand this to speak in a way that keeps you on the inside of that line. Crucially, the article goes on, the court held the narrow foregone co conclusion exception. Did you see the exception in the Constitution? No, this is all made up. They have reasons for why they make it up, but here's a foregone conclusion exception. What it is, it's not even applied through the, Fourth, uh, the, uh, the Fifth Amendment. It's actually applied for subpoenas, which are usually tied to administrative obligations. And you'll hear that. But and crucially, the court held that the narrow foregone conclusion exception to the Fifth Amendment does not apply in disclosing passcodes. Now, I want you to think about passcodes. What else is in your mind, folks, that they're trying to get you, that they've made a law that says you have to divulge that does or has the potential to incriminate you? Let me, without a question, and getting into esoteric, don't they require you have to identify yourself? Isn't that in your mind, too? So those of you that are learning to listen here, you're gonna, there's a fine line to be able to press how much they can do while, so that you don't put yourself in jeopardy while you challenge that they can ask you at all under the presumption of innocence or any other lawful right you have to avoid them. Am I saying get inside and battle with them? No, I'm saying this is how you do things to understand how to stay away from them. What other things are in your mind besides passcodes that are incriminating? I want you to think of that as you're reading through what this decision is talking about. That wasn't decided. I'm saying this is how you exercise what you know. You anticipate a future anticipation for using it, and you put that in the, in the, in the back of your mind until you need it. You don't jump out with it either. You've got to put it all in its time and its place. Okay, so just, in Pennsylvania, they're saying that the things in your mind that can incriminate are protected in the Fifth Amendment. As described in our brief, now to promote their brief, this exception applies only, I'd rather only hear what the court has to say, but they're going to promote their brief. And I guess that's proper because they want to tell you how they're, you know, they're asking for a donation to continue and they are the only ones doing something. Even if it's, I think, a half step, it's still something. Now, as described in our brief, this exception applies only when an individual is forced. Now, this exception is the foregone conclusion exception, which the courts have given as a failure in the Fifth Amendment to protect you. But that exception doesn't exist. It only applies when an individual is forced to comply with a subpoena for business records and only when complying with the subpoena does not reveal the, quote, contents of his mind, as the United States Supreme Court put it. All right? So here you have the connection again. As you read through these paragraphs, they're declaring to you a path that the jurisdiction applies to, or would apply to an application. But I'm telling you, if you if you want to be, you have to make a, a record that makes you not in there. And this is where we get the idea that I say you become a migrant, become a, what it ends up being for you also, it doesn't become so esoteric either, because everyone gets these messed up. You don't become resident, okay? It's pretty simple that way. Now, there's other factors. This is why I, I hesitate to even say these things, because it's not just that. How do you make a record that you're not that is really the trick, if it's a trick at all, given the inducements that they, they get you to consent into? What's your name? And you give them your whole name instead of just saying, I got the first name. And uh, the rest of it's uh, trapped in my mind because uh, the other stuff here is like, it's like a passcode. If I give you the rest of a name, you could use it to incriminate me. And beyond that, I'm going to need an attorney to defend myself from your cost, your felony. No, we don't say that. Oh, we want to be how smart we are in the laws and try to out and make it look a cop, make it look ignorant. I'm trying to say, no, make an, a record that they can't give you and trap you. And then you have these discussions in there where you could set aside this whole thing because I wasn't a business with business records. No, I wasn't that assumed name that they put on me in all caps. 
You want to do that that way? That indicates under state law, you go to their own laws, but that's a business corporation. Why? How do you do that? I've done this before years ago. You go to the Secretary of State's office. Not all of them, but for the most part, you'll find them show you returns of names in all caps. But on the web page, they can use both. You look around all state-sanctioned or issued material, uh, words, uh, game, names, and places, and they're all in caps. Why? As I've told you before, one state, we found the bankruptcy rules of the state, not the federal, the state, was it the 1994 bankruptcy book? I can't remember now, Rule 1005 explains what this is about. You're designated as a debtor with an all-caps name. You can, they can use the upper and lower case, but that's after they designate you as a debtor in bankruptcy. Now, do I hear anybody going it that way? No, no. You all complain about the being capitalized name and all goods, all going over through the nonsense about how that the, the you're not and don't have another world to explain. They didn't have a right to encroach upon you by their own rules. Again, learn how to communicate through what they're doing to show the distinction that you have to be. This says subpoena for business records. What have I told you? This whole thing is set up around commerce. This is almost reading right out of the impliedly reading right out of the tax code. All right, so if you read between the lines, they're telling you what this authority is within this court decision. You're not going to hear this case discuss it this way, though, is our problem. Because if they did, they'd figure, they'd figure you out, you'd figure them out. If I have to declare, put them, that you're a man or a woman in the record, says a judge, we couldn't prosecute anyone. You hear that in this case? Well, no, you won't. But okay, so I get frustrated, folks. It's so, in so, in a way, it's so so easy to get into the mindset to see this stuff, and the hard part becomes they won't allow you to avoid them. That makes them criminals, high crimes and misdemeanor type criminals, treason type criminals. And I'm not saying that. I go right to the code. I Hop, copy and paste this text and I say that's what you're doing am I charging them criminally no I'm just showing how their activity is criminal in this country you don't have the right to charge criminally do you I should have made another clue to y'all no who do you got to go through there's pseudo state officer that's a bar member correct okay so there is your control but at any rate it's not even talking about how you get around that notwithstanding Disclosing passcodes is against the fifth amendment because, because for a business records, it's not supposed to expose the contents of the of his mind. What's the mind in a business, folks? Got to ask. You got to look at this totally. It's you can't divorce every category of possibility. You have to uh, agree with all of it, and then look at where you stand relative to all that, and then identify the difference and distinction that you are, as a man or woman are relative to this thing that applies to business records, the exception of which can't divulge the content of the mind of a business? Corporations are people too, folks. What's the mind of a business? Even within a subpoena, they only have so much to uh, supply. In fact, long time ago, we countered the state of Arizona's uh, subpoena demands multiple times based on this very condition. They could not do what they wanted to do. The subpoena had no force and effect. So, you can not read this. You can think there's nothing for you to do, or you can start re understanding this is a a, a, a tightening noose on you. Uh, there's a few pathways of to be escaping it, I suppose you can say. And if you know those, you got the key to escape the door. That's the, ins the cell wall, the, the cell door that they've, they're closing in on you. The contents of your mind in a business context can't even suffer the exclusion of the Fifth Amendment for foregone conclusion exception should be a very big takeaway once you apply it in your mind and work it through. Just keep working through this stuff. Sit and contemplate, not your navel, what the dynamic here is. It's much deeper than they're allowing and giving question to, but this is the way they communicate. 
If you start communicating this way and you apply it in different areas, you're going to start setting up a record that allows them to see you're just not the local Joe on the street that they can harass or continue to harass or whatever. Now they'll, they're, you're going to put yourself in places they will, and some of you are doing that, and I'm not so sure I like it for you all, but because it's, it really is dangerous, and you could be doing, I think, better work elsewhere. But in, it does, I can't stop what you do. If you have these things in your mind about how this works, you can start turning it around, even if it's a question they have to deal with it. Why? Why is this important? Because the Pennsylvania Supreme Court agreed with EFF. See, they're promoting their thing. They're not going after the Supreme Court. Could have said as EFF plus to put in their in their in their brief. In other words, EFF they're trying to say that this court used that theory. We don't know that's the case. I say that because we don't want to put EFF on a pedestal. Although I give them full credit for being in the in this condition to expose this, I think it all fell short. That's why you got to be careful of putting things on high pedestals. Why you don't agree? I don't ag agree with attorneys hardly at all what they do. And they don't answer me when I point out the law. Why didn't you do this? It says right here, this can be done. Why didn't you do it in, as a defense? When they don't answer me, they're part of the problem. Someone who reads that, that I'm trying to help and doesn't respond to me, is, is their own problem or a player. Wouldn't you want to know about having a certain, when it's in the law and not being done, wouldn't you want to know as a victim of this, of this crime against you to get that on the record and answered what, right or wrong? Wouldn't you want to ask these things? And I'm saying to do that, you do it ahead of time. And then you get it on the record. You keep your sentences nice and short to what the law says. The demand is made. You find in your mind, you go through your Rolodex of positions and bullet points, and you pull out the one you need at the time, and you throw it on the, you throw it on the, on the accuser or the, the claimant or whatever it is, however it works out on the dynamic. The, the Supreme Court said this, though, is here's the reason behind this, which is very important. Requiring the Commonwealth to do, it wrote, the Supreme Court wrote, requiring the Commonwealth to do the heavy lifting indeed to shoulder the entire load in bringing in, building and bringing a criminal case without a defendant's assistance may be inconvenient and even difficult. Yet, to apply the foregone conclusion rationale in these circumstances would allow the exception to swallow the constitutional privilege. 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 Nevertheless, okay, they didn't repeat it three times. I did. Full emphasis, as they say. Or emphasis, what is this? Okay, nevertheless, this constitutional right is firmly grounded, grounded like a ship, Run aground. Now you're on the land here, folks. But nevertheless, this constitutional right is firmly grounded in the real quote, the realization that a, the privilege, while sometimes a shelter to the guilty, is often a protection to the innocent. Now you go through and read that through in the between the lines, and you're going to start to see what I've been saying all the all this time about why you bring this stuff forward what it does for you within the context of the things they already know they're supposed to be not doing. That the so-called judge has to explain it. Why does a judge have to explain it to the cops? Unless they're in minus, AQ, I, uh, minus 80 IQ. And that's, that's a serious problem, folks, if you haven't figured that part out. So for you and for me, we have to understand, whether people will agree with me or not on this, that you have to understand the dynamic of what the presumption in the state is using against you in face of the entire load to bring the case by the state is. Because what? that They don't talk about it. It's the presumption of innocence. Once you sit in that mindset, do you blat out a presumption of this all the time? No, you have to build the elements like this that are you asserting that presumption. Why? Because you're defeating all the presumptions I've read in the court cases that exist to the favor of the state, notwithstanding what this says about the entire load. See, they're trying to build the case, and you have protections against that encroachment. And I'm attempting to get you to understand the hierarchy, a, an, hi, 
and hierarchy, not the hierarchy, and hierarchy of of record that you make that's substantial, not your mere opinion, but the things that are recognized off before you even got there. Beyond your opinion and whatever you think that is already acknowledged by the by the system that's coming up against you. And you defeat it right there. Not because you know so much. You're in a hand-to-hand -hand combat, verbal combat, with a code enforcement guy called a cop, and he wants to hurt you. That's why. And you're doing more jujitsu than you are hand-to-hand -hand combat if you're doing this thing a lot better. And I'm trying to get people to do that. Why? Because I hope I said it before, you can be killed now for no reason than someone from some cop feared for life or yet a furtive action, which is determined on his triggering. If you want to talk about a liberal with a gun. And so, serious conditions here. I'm not going to read more to this. You can, if, if you are interested... You will pick up this link, look with your eyes, look between the lines as best you can. I, I don't know what to do. I know you, there's a missing, I could af, offer a ton more. I don't know what good it does if no one's really interested beyond that. I suppose if you put two and two together, you'll come up with a question or two. And I can see that eventually in an email. Uh, until then, I'm just gonna, I guess I'll just keep moving on. Victory, they say, folks. Yeah, it just explains to you what was already there. It wasn't a victory because the, the, the people had to defend against it. And when you look inside the case on how the rationale works, it's not a victory really at all. It's a half step toward what should have been going on. And they don't really touch the basic, the foundation of what men and women need to stand on. The ground, folks. Remember, you have this idea out there that, why did they say grounded and not, Why'd they use that reference? When you, some of you understand, and I don't get too wrapped up with it, it's just a realization that this is a lot, a lot, but not solely, a lot in an admiralty international context, international law context, admiralty context. You're grounded. Now, is removing the right is now not on the ship, if you will, not at the international side. It goes domestic in your private side, and you're on the land. Now, don't get wrapped up with this. This is just a way to consider it jurisdictionally. And so what you're doing is you're, you're showing that you were never on the ship. That's an avoidance, not getting inside the system. That's not getting on the deck of the ship of state and then battling it out with the admiral. That's not doing that. That's saying, no, the, the, the ship got grounded. It's not functioning anymore. And you, you now are jumping off right there because they didn't have the right to come off the ocean, if you will. And I, again, don't get wrapped up with this stuff. Understand the jurisdictional hat condition. And you're going to go a lot farther. Anyway, so this is just a Rolodex of conditions and steps in your mind relative to what they're saying here. This would only apply, I guess, in agreement by uh, in Pennsylvania right now. But I think, you could, again, the footing, equal footing, I think you can bring it out if you need a rationale that way to work your presumption of innocence why the stuff in your mind is only applicable in administrative, uh, is not even applicable in administrative sense. Therefore, it's not even applicable to you uh, when you're not in the administrative sense. Therefore, them addressing you is an administrative sense, isn't it? Uh, and so you start understanding the hierarchy here, and I, th I would hope... Like me, you can see how really easy it is to work this thing through and just bring up what you need. Now, you make a, rec a written record of all that, too, because you're going to need, if they go beyond the, account the encounter, you're going to need to say again on the record ahead uh, after the fact how the burden was flipped and they failed, essentially, and that you refuted the presumptions without their, their uh, coming back with, a, uh, with an answer that was in law when you do it correctly. This is not that oblig. I mean, it sounds kind of legalistic. It's not. It's really just a more formal way of you addressing a trespasser. And because they're in a color of authority, they use a color of authority. That brings them into the worst crime. When it's in government, it's the highest crime. Because we've got dealing now with offices of trust, aren't we? And that's trust law, and that's a different way to approach this. And I've covered that again, and I le where did I learn that? Uh, for clear, for sure, for true, folks, in the mining law. It's all, there's three or four different things going on in the mining law. One of them is the establishment of a trust. The government sits in a whole, it doesn't sit as a sovereign there. 
an administrative code enforcer is not sitting as a sovereign. He's re representing the sovereign, but the sovereign may not have jurisdiction over what you do. It may be floating around and trying to get you to, you know, they're pulling you up from a dinghy onto their, their ship of state. But you just have to ground it. Now, also, let's go into currency. Currency, C, currency money, because this is an underlying problem, or current, electrical current. What happens when you ground a circuit, folks? It either functions the way it's designed or it shorts, doesn't it? What's the what's the one doing the burning? The one flipping the switch to ground it or the, the circuit that's coming to be powered up by the grounding? And so another analogy if you needed one. When the, the load, the burden of the state comes on you and it's improper, when you ground it, they turn to blue smoke. And everybody knows when you let the sacred smoke out, the circuit don't work. All right, the pixies don't. The pixies just uh, evaporate. You let out the pixies, and all of a sudden you don't have a circuit working anymore, and you're standing there with the switch in your hand. Who done that? And so I don't know how you all rationalize this stuff. I, I try to bring these different analogies, whether or not they work or not, I don't know. But these two paragraphs, which... Uh, are giving you the basis. They sit in commerce. You're not that. They give you a name. The name they're asking you for is a name in commerce. They want to ask you for a full name, which you don't even understand what that is, but you start to rattle off a name because you want to identify yourself, not knowing that here Pennsylvania says anything in your mind that's a passcode that can incriminate you is protected because you're not in a business, not under subpoena, not under any obligation, only under the mere presumption of a, of a question of your, your guilt, which is a, uh, wrong because they haven't did what? The articulable basis, which they can fraudulently come forward, and you can turn back on that. The, the, despite, so the, the, my view, just to apply this, and I'm not saying you go argue this, you've got to think about it. Asking for your name under a presumption of innocence is violating this provision, it seems to me. It's a passcode by name coming out to put you into a system that they fraudulently convert to what? A business entity, a person subject to their corporate state or their de, de facto state or the de jure state that doesn't have authority over men and women unless they can get what everyone understands is that more common law, if you will. I hate that term, but the... Uh, the victim, you find a, uh, not a victim, that's a, a statutory term, a, a harm that you've done to uh, someone's, uh, someone or someone's property. And in that regard, it's, it actually would be totally different anyway. You're going to, be going to deal with the one who did that. And so I don't want to get lost on this. I want to, I'm trying to show you, you read these court cases, you can pull out a ton of stuff, but you then use these understandings. You know it's about a business now. And you know, even there's, an, there's a condition, a prohibition, even if you were a business, that you can take the conversation you have with the code enforcement if you know the collateral subject matter that they're bringing to you is in this same commercial construction. You can avoid it immediately. You don't wax eloquent about all you know. You just, uh, you just put out the objection based on what you see the courts have already stated. Am I using the courts to defend myself? No. I'm anticipating that's what the courts are going to have to say again if I get brought in. If they beat me down. And you take away those presumptions, this whole thing works. Now, why is it working on presumptions that way, folks? Because the state's so sovereign or because it's an occupying force? That's a question you get to answer. So we have victory, so-called. They can't divulge the, the contents of your passcodes. And then I get this email, this uh, through the Twitter sphere, or uh, they must have been through the Twitter sphere. Latest hacker news and IT security news. New Chrome password stealer, CS Stealer, sends st uh, stolen data to a Mongo database, a non MongoDB database. So, where your passcodes are protected, if someone can steal them inside your system and the systems in your digital systems are set up to be able to have it done, this database can be used and gotten by whomever eventually, and then you don't have the right to not incriminate yourself. Why these digital things are so dangerous. Now, Chrome. I've thought from day one Chrome was a plant. I've, I've never liked it. Never, I just never liked it. Now, I have used a couple of them. Uh, I use them sparingly. 
And I use them actually because they become technical, uh, what do you call it, troubleshooting. I can use what, what Firefox won't work or Mozilla won't, won't work. I can use a Chrome to interrogate, which is also another condition. But anyway, so you can be hacked inside your system. And this is the thing about these passwords. And this is the vulnerability. Why do you continue to use these things in a, in a way that allows someone to engage you and steal your right to remain silent? Steal your uh, past, your mental past codes. I don't mean in, in past words. I mean your, your incriminating information. We really have to return, notwithstanding any failing as it starts to come on you as you get older. And everything has to go back in our mind, folks. We have to get rid of the digital connection. They gave that to us as a tool to destroy what the Supreme, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania just said is protectable. And so, so we look at this right off the bat. A Chrome browser is set up. He didn't say Mozilla was affected. No, I, I think Chrome was set up to do that. I don't, and I don't, and so I have a hard time agreeing with a lot of things that to go use in the future in the digital sphere in a way partly i'm almost feeling lucky i'm not gonna you know i mean it's just this thing kind of is i'm near the end of it you know how many decades do i have to go here i mean i, I fought it this far i can continue to continue to fight if i don't get something fine that's the only attitude i have right now folks i hadn't have i've had this added this so-called attitude for two decades I was going to do without folks i, I knew this early on i was going to there was nothing going to be at the end if you will all this stuff was a setup. How did I know that when I was so young? There's a truth that speaks to you. How to get at that's a whole different thing. And that's what I try to do, what I've learned, not because of that, but because of the other things in the last maybe 15 years that focused in on the how of this. So you can keep your passwords, but if you aren't diligent to protect yourself against the digital vulnerability, the period, it's just a digital vulnerability. There's nothing more to it. And particularly this one in Chrome was just, for me, uh, again, I, I'm glad I don't use Chrome. Uh, I don't understand it. Uh, the Android phone, when you don't re when you realize they're sticking a, a use over the top of the the hardware, a found over the found a root foundation, you realize you're done, folks. I don't even know what the question is here. And so, we're going to have to tune this up. Those of you that are really engaging, we don't see the pressure right now, but it's working under the skin. It's all you already know that. If nobody else, no job Snowden at least exposed that. But I told you why they did that, and y'all seem to go to sleep on this. But anyway, so you want to keep your passwords protected. Why? Look at the Fifth Amendment protection you can do, and the protection you can say again. You're not a business under subpoena, are you? Wow, think about that. Think about that because that means something else. That means there was something you did that was required to have been done, not you did, that they had to do before you got to that step. And this is the kind of thought I want you to get into. You get the steps going backwards of how it was supposed to be done that it wasn't, and you get these people, these criminals, every time. They can only step so far back, and it was really just the first part that they infiltrated on you wrongly. You can go back two, three, five, ten steps you don't divulge it all. You just go to the, like they do. They ask you the question just beyond your knowledge so they know you don't know, and then they hit you there. You have to do the same thing with them but the other way. You, uh, you give them a position. As soon as they balk, you know they don't know, don't know anything before that. You don't divulge that. Why? Because they take it as a record that they go fix. You need more, more armor, more re weapons that you sit in reserve. Okay, so... You can't sit in reserve when, you're, when your browser is set up uh, to accept a password stealer and everything else stealer. And you're going to find out here as we go, uh, if I get there, uh, is, Israel's designed this uh, uh, program. It, it calls your phone and can load itself up. If you don't think that these digital devices are the silent weapons in the quiet war against you, and they, they take from you what the Pennsylvania court just said was applicable to a business under subpoena, which means it had to be in there, and they treat you like that, and that's how you got your Fifth Amendment. After you've committed. In this case, they said, no, we didn't commit. And therefore, you've grounded, you've shorted yourself out. You have no power anymore. You used it all in one bad action, your vapor. And so, I've, I've never liked Chrome, uh, and it's there... I have a one or two browsers that I do that are on, on Linux uh, that I use that 
uh, just because of the Linux platform, I'm a little bit more feeling, and I don't use them a lot, just really for tech. And then I, I haven't gotten to this tab. Uh, I haven't really gone through it. It was for those in Mozilla Firefox privacy, the complete how-to guide. I'm not, I'm not saying that the Mozilla is bulletproof. It's not. But there, it wasn't attacked, and it's a little bit more obvious. And you, I'll give you a link for this Firefox privacy. Do not do everything that they show in this. Again, you have to read the information and truly think about what they're telling you. What this is, though, is telling you all the places you can be vulnerable and what you might be able to consider to do about it. Those of you looking for anonymity, be careful of the fingerprint. They actually talk to that, but you don't want to... Some of my browsers are locked down pretty good, so I'd be a pretty bad fingerprint out there that's fine and identify. But some I just leave... I leave without touch. I just hardly put anything on them, and I just go do a proxy that I can figure maybe be behind a thing. Why? I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just attempting to obliterate any type of trail that someone would fabricate what I think I'm doing. And what I do with what I study relative to objects of crime against us that we're trying to stop, I don't want people to, if they're doing it, not that I put myself on any pedestal, I don't know. But if it's possible, which I think it is, I put myself in a place, I just keep my trail as scrubbed as I possibly can, make the work harder. Ultimately, a big, uh, someone who wants you with the resources, you're, you're, you're kind of toast. But then, then your correct actions, if you will, your knowledge of what I'm telling you in what you're doing, why you do, so, you do things for reasons, not just because you just do them. Not because someone said so, but there's an actual reason, like in the law. Like I've told you before, I'm doing this certain thing. I went to Proton Mail. They say it's encrypted. I expect that. That means that that was in a, a notice of intention that I wanted to keep this conversation private. Notwithstanding, there may not be anything private. My intention is all important at that point. And that's why you do it. Not because it's full, totally protecting you, but because you do it for reasons. Now, if you never thought about that, well, you think that's a lot to think about. That's the thing they did to us, obviously, since 9-11, at least the Patriot Act. That wasn't my rule, folks. It's not my demand. I'm not wired all this this way, actually. And so I'll add now, we'll go to Mozilla, not an endorsement more than a piece of comprehensive information, how to take a Mozilla browser and so-called restore privacy. But I'm going to tell you, be careful on doing everything they do. And when you do some of that, it interferes with your travel around the Internet. It will do that. So you may want to take a compromise. It all depends on who you are. Okay, so your passwords are sacred in your mind, but if they can take them any way else, and these bills, these, these articles came right up at the same time to expose this, this other thing, then you're not protected, right? On the other hand, you can get people in legislators that want to protect to some, uh, it's important that as a society we do some protection. They could care less about imposing upon your mind and your passcodes and your security and be a presumption of innocence. And yet, on the other hand, they'll turn around, utilizing the so-called presumption of innocence, and impose uh, really heinous type of regulations and things that come up. And this one kind of fired me up a bit, but I don't want to get too deep in it either. Uh, but when you see the legislators doing what is ordering things that are medically impossible, when you understand that their licenses only give an ethical guideline not a capacity guideline to a state. You realize laws like this, you've got, I just have to put it in the terms of the authority they're, they're claiming to do this. These are demons in the legislators, where an Ohio bill now orders doctors to re-implant an ectopic pregnancy or face abortion murder charges. Now, an ectopic, ectopic pregnancy is where the egg lodges and starts to grow in a place other than the uterus, like a tubal pregnancy. I don't know of any doctor that can produce, that can, that can take that and implant it into a uterus to fix this. But this is what this law does. This is uh, under the color of an abor abortion, uh, anti-abortion. I'm going to insert something here. I went back and looked a little bit. What was the guidance on this for people that believe this way? And I've had a ton of trouble when I'm looking through all this stuff and I'm finding out language is so important to understand. And right now I don't have the time to go and do this. But what was the sorrow put on a woman 
why? It was my question. Why? Why would you do that? And you know, I looked inside this and I said, okay, what the sorrow was woman to, to, to go forth and multiply. And the sorrow would be on this point. But after the birth, there's no memory of that pain. And we have a gift, I'm told. I'm not a woman. I don't know. And this is the other problem. Even within the grand design of go forth and multiply, in the system and the plan, there's misconce the misconception. There's, there's miscarriages inside this system. The natural system has miscarriages, notwithstanding the commandment to go forth and multiply. I would have thought a perfection would have said we're going to go from start to finish and we're going to have multipl multiplicity going on here, folks, the, mag the multitude. And yet this bill orders an, a, a medical procedure that's unknown, can't be done, doesn't know. They're saying that when you find an ectopic pregnancy as a doctor, you will, try, you will attempt to reimplant it. Extra surgery as well. Never looking at the doctors to say anything. And I'm looking at this also. You think your privacy is protected? You think you have a right to do something and the bill like this comes out? You better relook at what's going on. These people, I will call them demons in this regard because they're professing to support this so-called, uh, um, if you will, it's not anti-abortion, but an anti-abortion biblical view isn't even met by the Creator. And now you start to see the state, for those of you that have said this before, I'm going to say this is how I look at it here, the state as God. This is a complete deception. This is also told that this will be coming on in, if you will, the end days. And this deception has been going on forever, so I don't know when those end days happen. So to me, that's kind of an irrelevant statement, except to keep focusing on the fact that we are to, we'll be deceived. Well, in fact, we will, are to be deceived. And we are, I've told you, I've talked about this deception thing long, long and hard over the years. We, it's a, we have to learn to discern and we have to figure out when this is not right. I look at this now. This is going to have terrible consequences. And this is another attack on women. And this is an attack by people who try to make themselves greater than the Creator that allows for miscarriages underneath the commandment that demand the the condition that you shall go forth and multiply. And boy, people do, don't they? This is a, really a crime. And I don't know what more to say. It's not about abortion, folks. This has gone beyond. We're one step beyond now. What's that, that song? One step beyond. Yes. We're actually a couple steps beyond. And I don't hear anybody stepping in to stop it, and I see, if you will, cult mentality wherever I go without trying to put cult mentality everywhere. The religions now, the churches are cults, the Republican Party's this cult, the Democratic Party's a cult, government's a cult. Not a cult anymore, though, I'll tell you that, coming out like this. A bill to ban abortion introduced to Ohio state legislature requires doctors to reimplant an ectopic pregnancy into a woman's uterus. The procedure that does not exist in medical science. And if they don't do that, they face charges for abortion murder. This is the second time practicing obstetricians and gynecologists have tried to tell the Ohio legislature the idea is currently medically impossible. But see, in legal, it doesn't matter. Apparently, they say, if you think it's impossible, you're not trying hard enough. Anyway, I'm going to end right here. This is... Well, I don't know. It's beyond words to describe how wrong this really is evil. Okay? This is just evil. This is a group of people believing they can, they are better than nature. They can command nature. They can create, they can command the creation itself. And in Pennsylvania, where they look at your right to privacy, and there's something sacred to you within your own body, apparently, not so much in regard of a Pennsylvania bill now will require death certificates for fertilized eggs that never implant in the universe. In the uterus. Yeah, the universe. That's right. <laughs> that would work. Implant in the uterus. This is an attack on women. How would they know anyway? And that brought up another, when I asked my own self that question, how would they know that it was fertilized or not? And then, well, man, if I say that and you ask that question yourself or you hear me say it and you think about that for the same first time, how would they know to be able to enforce this? may not be such an impossible thing to know, 
given the digital world that they are now building in the prison, the digital prison, and sensors that they're building around your world. This is a scary bill on top of it all. Death certificates for fertilized eggs. See, this is pushing, I told you, you they were pushing back something here that Roe versus Wade in, uh, allowed. This has nothing to do with abortion, has nothing to do with any of that. This has to do with state power of gods coming in and doing different than nature can provide. Now they're professing they can see uh, that fertilized eggs become the legal person that they have jurisdiction over. And I told you they would come back to this point. I told you that. They're attempting to do it now. How did I know that? Because it's written in, the com in how this thing rolls out to what they're going to control. Anti-abortion lawmakers, folks, I just told you, in Ohio, they're trying to be demigods. They're demons. They don't even fulfill the nature of the creation. They're trying to be better than that here on Earth. And that brings up a whole other thing. Who, If you look inside that construction, what that belief system will tell you, who controls the Earth? Through deception as well. And anti-abortion lawmakers of Pennsylvania want, want to pass a bill that would require burials and, as a result, birth certificates for fetal remains, which in their terms includes any fertilized egg that never implanted in a person's uterus. I'm going to stop here. It's nonsense stuff. You've got to read this stuff, though. You've got to understand this nonsense. This is an attack on women. This is an attack on the women to be uh, more uh, give set up for the intrusion into your life of surveillance. Uh, and they've already got it, if you really think about what they do have and how they integrate what they go on. Uh, then you, my first comment was, you know, they've already, already got the, the nest. They have you in your nest. They're listening to your conversations. They've got your phones. They got, they're plugged in with their hackings. They've they got you looking for stuff. If you want to go look around uh, on the Internet to stay away from doctors, this one will keep women away from doctors. Why? Because the doctor becomes the, the first witness of the of the of the fact of the fertilization, right? And so you stay away from doctors. You start to do things that you may not want to do. Why? Because if you do, you incriminate yourself. This law requires that if you're going to get any kind of help, you're going to incriminate yourself. Where's the protection for that? That this even reaches the point of being a, a, um, an offering of a law has to tell you we're living in some demonic times. I don't know what else to word. If I'm going to go into the Bible and start looking at it, that's the terms that are used there. And these people underneath the uh, anti-abortion label are garnering a lot of support. And yet you look at the facts of what this does on the ground, what this does to people. First of all, I don't know what the jurisdiction of the state to do this is. Secondly, the intrusion that it does, that the Pennsylvania court said you have certain rights to that apply to businesses, is not extended to you as a woman. I find an interesting dichotomy, at least. Anyway, I won't go any more. Death certificates for fertilized eggs, folks. Remains, the fetal remains law, in definition, the fetal remains means the remains of a fetus, human fetus, not the unborn. This is like, again, the Supreme Court said we can't, the legal jurisdiction can't recognize it until it's in the world. And apparently then admitted of the world, if you don't understand the distinction here as well, and how they pull that off and what you have to be different then. Uh, fetal remains statute, Minnesota statute. Interesting, right? We're talking about Pennsylvania. Defines the remains of a, fe a human fetus as the remains of the dead offspring of a human being that has uh, reached a stage of development so that there are cartilaginous structures, fetal or skeletal parts after the abortion or miscarriage, whether or not the remains have been obtained by induced, spontaneous, or accidental means. According to Pennsylvania statute, the fetal remains means the fetus expelled or extraction in the case of a fetal death. They're talking a fertilized egg here, folks. Fetal death means the expulsion or extraction from it from a mother for the product of conception in a 16-week uh, gestation, which shows no evidence of life after expulsion. How, who makes that determination? They've adjusted this back to the fertilization of an egg, which is not even a state function, is it? But at any rate, 
serious encroachments coming on from whom? A Republican Party. I'm not arguing one way or the other on abortion and anti-abortion. I am showing you what God, a state as God starts to look like. It attempts to uh, determine the creation itself. Impossible to its licensees' capabilities as well. And it doesn't care. It's going to shove it out there anyway. Where's the presumption of innocence of a woman where this happens? Where's your ability to talk with people underneath a, the privilege now of an, an anonymity and privateness? They don't. These people aren't caring about you. They're making laws to make state be God. They are trying to create or make it appear that they can actually reconstruct and redirect creation itself. And I've pointed out quickly, if nothing, if not by by analysis deeper, the commandment to go forth and multiply the sorrow on a woman until this conception, and then within their sorrow, there's miscarriage. Underneath the commandment to multiply. And the state wants to make that impossible. With medical procedures that are unknown to man, and I think rightfully so, has to show you we're not dealing with a normal system. We're not even dealing in legality here. We're dealing in far, far worse. We're dealing in those things of product in the parasitic nature underneath the color of a, of a benefice, underneath the color of righteousness. I don't care where you look, you'll start to see this. They care of, really about the bottom line. Then boy, won't there, won't they, even underneath the attempt, won't they make a lot more money in the medical profession? Won't that be a part now of your health care, so-called? You will be pregnant, and we will try to cause you to be pregnant, period. If you show any type of pregnancy, notwithstanding what nature says. And I don't know about if you look a little bit deeper on this. My understanding, I'm not a woman, obviously. My understanding is ectopic pregnancies and places where the, uter the egg will be fertilized but not have a place to land means that there's a problem, naturally, problem that are self-selected or a health con underlying health condition that causes this or maybe a genetic, if I can say genetic, uh, mechanical predisposition. You're dealing way deeper in these things than, than a state was ever supposed to be a limited form to protect against. And yet, you look at this next story, they deny you that. They order you to do certain things that are impossible. And they continue this thing, which you need to know about. And I think this was a hit on Walmart. And I'm not protecting Walmart, but this seemed, this article was a hit on Walmart. But they, the government then allows certain things to develop in the commerce system that are a threat to you. Again, fortifying that medical system and fortifying the corporate bottom line, and fortifying what they promote to you as cheaper food, but with a hidden payload of potential damages and likely damages. Walmart pork products containing superbugs resistant to critically important antibiotics discovered. So we were told that this would happen. It is happening now. They're targeting Walmart. You can go through all the numbers. I think this is a hit on Walmart because they don't tell you who the other co big national co uh, company is. They mentioned three near the bottom of the article. And to that extent that these companies are doing that to us, we need to see it stopped. They do point out that there's a certain way that the, the hogs are treated that cause stress that require the antibiotics. And if you looked at that and didn't do that to the sow, or caging the sow for, for making more babies, See, they're caging you as a woman to make you have those babies, folks. Why? Nature doesn't even allow it, but they're going to. So they show you how the human animal is being contained, conditioned. They are superior. They're the ones that are doing the husbandry of the human animal. 
and the pigs are constrained to have to produce in cages. And then there have to be fed special medicines and in special conditions in order to produce plenty more than they might in a state of stress. This is not just Walmart is the point. And you go through this and you see that the antibiotics in Western science is not, is not certainly foolproof like they want you to believe, first of all. Secondly, you're taking in foods that are really harmful, that if you contract these things that are in the meat and you don't cook them well, I guess the bottom one, the bottom line is make sure you cook everything, folks. I mean, romaine lettuce is killing people. Cook that, I suppose. Or guess what? You have to stop eating it. Like I've been saying, okay, they don't want me to eat romaine. They put that stuff in there and they agree to it. I'm not going to eat it. Or I'll turn around and grow it in the garden. I'll have to learn how to do that if I don't know. Hey, going back to this story. The testing has revealed the presence of bacteria resistant to multiple antibiotics in pork products sold at Walmart stores in the eastern United States. Now remember, China bought, the, I think it was the Smith Company, the biggest processor, in the eastern United States. Is there a connection? They don't talk about it. No, they're after Walmart. But it's not just Walmart. The problem here is the 27% the of resistant bacteria that requires the highest priority critical important antimicrobials to kill them. Why? Because nature's tough. And we keep messing with it instead of going back and saying, wait a minute, at some point, science can't compete with nature. You can't stop creation doing what creation's doing. And then admit to that humility. No, we can't do that. Anyway, so your Walmart pork and other pork everywhere, folks, it seems, is now those places that use antibiotics and the overuse is causing a problem. They found that caging the female to produce is also very stressful. To make special constraints on a female creates its own problems. Human females, folks, in Ohio law, and these constraints and stresses put on you each month for the fetal death certificate, is the cage coming on, is these things coming in that neither party is helping to stop and no moral concepting behind, even though they stand on what they claim to be a moral guideline. That if they stop putting pig sows in these cages, they could at least reduce they reduce the stress loads on the sow, and they don't have to have so many antibiotics would be one potential answer. Now there's a ramification to all this. But what I found fascinating is you look over at what they make, the money they make at the producer level is really small, and you see the proof of of value at scale. It's very cheap, essentially, when you can do this. Our question would be, do we have to have it quite that cheap? No, you may look at the grocery store price, and that's where I'm going to go here in a second, and say, what do you mean cheap? But that's the, the fraud. At the producer level, they're not getting very much, if this chart I'll take about, talk about in a moment here is correct or close. That if we extended to the producer a little bit more money, as they say in the case of this antibiotics that are now, you catch this stuff, folks, you're uh, almost, you're near to a death sentence on this stuff in your food. So remember that food security I used to talk about? I said, forget it, it's gone. When they brought these laws in, you do not have food security. Can you look back at the news over the last few years since I said that and show that you're, and see that your food is not secure? Can you see that, folks? How did I predict that? I guess that implies that you see what I see. And that you would agree, your food's not as secure. If it was secure, why would I be talking about this? No, it's the bottom line and how they do it. So the subjection is, let's pick the, cow, the, the sows out of the cages and put them in a bigger, little bigger space. Well, that has a ramification on space as well. And so we reduce this threat to everybody globally. That wasn't their first answer, though. And so this, again, this glitch in the matrix starts to happen that I think it might be reasonable to pull them out of the cages. I haven't looked at this particular thing. Their production would go down, but it looks like there's a disparagement in what they get and forces them into this high-volume, compact scaling of feedlot-type stuff, which also produces other problems. But they're saying if you just give the sows a little more room, they're, they're, you can reduce the antibiotic need a lot. 
And that's the part of the problem. The more you use, the more tough the organisms get to resist what they're doing, which, which is caused by the stress and the close quarters. Right? Now, I want to, I'm kind of focusing on the sow and the baby production, and I got you to show you that they're going to take your, they need a death certificate for the cell that's died. They want to keep the bean counters, need something to count. That's what they're going to count. And if they find a pregnancy in your body anywhere, I don't care where it is, they're going to try and implant it in your uterus. Right? Good, bad, or indifferent. And they can't even do it, but they're going to try. Uh, you're not much different than the sow somehow in these cages causing all this problem. That you, you can see causes different problems in your life is attributable to a pig. We're told they're very intelligent. I haven't been around pigs that much, but those few that I have, they are pretty cool. I mean, all animals seem to be cool at some level. You just got to find where they are. Even like a goat that wants to decide he's going to own the own the barnyard. They got their own space. They got their own reality there as well. Uh, so it doesn't mean I'm not a meat eater, but there is this condition that because of the way meat is produced, we are causing problems to ourselves on a global scale. One answer would be to stop the stop the putting the females in the cages and the stressing of them and all this control that's put on them. And they get happier pigs and you get better meat. And you get less medical problems in the long run. And uh, let me get to the point of the fact of the, what apparently is the value. To a farmer, and I went to food politics for this chart. I haven't tested the chart, don't know anything about it. To a farmer, a boneless ham is 65 cents a pound. They claim retail, you're going to find it at 3.99 a pound. I looked at that and said, yeah, this is the scale of production stuff, and this is how the producer kind of gets taken down. This is why you have the problems in the producer class, because they really aren't getting what you have to pay. One of the responses that I had was, well, why don't you take the corporate overhead that goes above from 65 to 399, hand it back to the farmers in a way through price adjustments, if you will. And this becomes questionable. I'm just saying if we're going to stop the poisoning of people globally due to antibiotic overuse, one of the answers to give the sow more space, that's going to take something to do. You also may lose some production on that space. Uh, maybe if we give incentive to the farmer to do so, we can reduce this threat to us through antibiotics. Move the 65 cents a pound on boneless ham, maybe up to 90 cents, and maybe allow them to take a few more feet to raise a happy pig. Why? Not because it makes the pig happy ultimately. That's food. But we don't create a global calamity. And I looked at this chart. There's all kinds of fee. A, a, a farmer who grows turkeys makes 66 cents. All right, cranberry farmer, 19 cents a bag. Uh, it's, it's pittance. I've said in this country, if we could get the food to the people directly, which we should, we wouldn't have any hunger in this country. This chart tells you that too. So, but we have a problem, folks, and it, there's got to be a balance. We look at balancing things. We've got a harm. We've got harms that are developing. How, how are we going to do that? The producer is not giving the credit, so what they do is they it's like a natural reflex. I'm just going to do more where I can. And this starts to lead to other unhealthy things that are beyond the scope of this letter. But it does point out that the bottom line is what drives a lot of this, that you stress out the sow and the pig, and you need to give it more services, if you will, and it doesn't make it healthier, and it has consequences outside that it just somehow triggered to me, this is what we're doing to women uh, in this country, any country, relative to the types of laws I've seen, the Republicans bringing under the, the color of an, a, the benefits to a fetus, which even by the Bible restraint, the uh, Bible commandment that they profess to follow, it doesn't meet that at all. It, it goes well and beyond. And so this price differential, people, producers trying to produce, whether they're corporate or small, kind of interesting, the small producer that went organic actually is, they're taking the, the, the bulk of this, aren't they? They get to do that chart said, if uh, let's say if I'm building a ham and it's 65 cents to the farmer, if I can produce a local farm and tell you farm to, farm to house, if you will, direct, I can get the higher price. So you're cutting out all the middlemen. Now, that's a coup in a way. That's a pretty smart move for a farmer, a small farmer to do that, isn't it? They don't make 65 cents. They take care of their sow. They do their thing and maybe part more to benefit to you. And you're going to pay maybe the same price, but actually the, the hype gets it more. 
we can actually do this as well looking at the organic side farming, the small farmer. There's money bracketed in this between the what the producers get now and what you're going to pay for it. If we didn't change that, we could then look at a different business model, if you will, to run uh, the food systems in this country that won't bring on the collateral consequences that big money and government sanction allows. The government's not stopping this. This is actually within the standards. In fact, that one story, Walmart will say they used a different association standard that the industry uses in order to say that the stuff they sell is quite fine. It's quite fine to have all these resistant bacteria in your meat, folks. They don't take any direct responsibility whatsoever. They have a reliance defense on everybody else. It's all in on it. And so what about this 66 cents to a farmer not getting much when you're paying three or 11 pound butterball, 66 cents, I guess a pound, and you're going to pay like 16 or 17 uh, for an 11 pound uh, butterball? Well, what a, well, you better look into those anyway. But at any rate, what about that big differential? What's it doing? The fact that the, the farmers are having to do economies at scale type things are causing trouble. And those that can't keep up, for millions of Americans in the middle of the country, it feels like an economic depression right now. There's something way out of line going on that we, if we want to be a society that's going to look into the future and, and be, help ourselves, it's apparently going to take more than who's been running the show at this point. Okay, so we've got tons of problems coming on. It's self-induced, and we it's like the farmer doing the same monocropping, and you don't respect the soil. You actually don't respect what Mother Nature can provide. You try to recreate the creation, and it fails. It seems to fail at every turn. Is it guaranteed? No. The whole point, I was also saying, miscarriages are part of the program, so you're going to have crop failures. That's just the nature of how this place is wired. It wasn't perfect place. We're told that, too. Why people think they can make it a perfect place shows that they are mentally unstable. And when you have misdynamics going on, people in the middle of the country, I say, but wherever there's about production that's a smaller production, farms are going down. People, uh, um, it looks like a big recession. In this article, you can confirm it to yourself. The 66 cents is really not enough. Yes, there's niche markets in agriculture and production, but they're not enough to keep the major economic depression on us already. Those are their producers are the, probably the weakest link. This is a notice to you all. They're, they're committing suicides, folks, over this. I only can imagine. I don't understand it. I can only imagine the pressure. When you see uh, that the farmer only gets 66 cents for that, and yet you've got to pay three three ninety nine. Where's that money going, folks? Where's it coming from? We have a m collateral consequences for not mistreating for uh, for for uh, for not mistreating a sow, for not mistreating our women, human females. It's not our problem that we have. The government creates it for themselves, and that's done by people too. And that's the insidious, and I say demonic thing. There's no real support. I don't care where you look for the kinds of things that are going on. We leave it to these people to do as we have. These are the kinds of things going on. People are killing themselves. So what they, Ohio, you're going to you implant the, you're going to force the implementation, even if they could, of the of a ectopic pregnancy into a uterus. You're going to have a baby woman. You're going to have that baby. It's going to grow up to be a farmer, and it's going to shoot itself. How's that? So this is, uh, again, the backwards thinking I see going on that's grap uh, gripped this world, essentially. I think it was actually told to us, if we looked at it clearly, that uh, we don't uh, understand. You keep people compressed, you keep them constrained, and at some point they break. In this case, it's a depression where you don't really hear about it in a population that's politically irrelevant. But Vilsack told us that, correct? A couple years ago I reported on that. Right in the production is right where I where I live, if you will. Um, we're in a, we're in the mining side. No different. You think miners are really rich? Yeah, there's an inducement, but you know, when you get into the business of it, there's cartels and all kinds of stuff that keep the market 
but well we have to make sure that the market price is enough to be able to go get it because we may not make enough even though what you see is a, whatever money it is because we don't get near that much when you go to the market side and so there's a big disparagement about where the money actually goes and the places wired to go there that if we're going to take, we got more work to do than just the things I even talked about relative to like, how do you deal with the cops? We're killing, people are killing themselves on this thing, folks. It's already, the, the economy's going down the tubes. More importantly, it's the productive side of the society, which you should be really concerned about. You think that 66 cents is going to be there when there's no one to collect it? You, th you think the 3.99 a pound is going to be available when there's very few hogs to grow? Or the problem that they're causing is making you have to go to the hospital? What's that What's that cost to you, Three ninety nine a pound? That would be cheap. You'd be lucky to get away with that. And so what are they doing? We said putting sows in these narrow cages for production of big more pigs to go to slaughter is a problem. It causes consequences. It's unintended as well. Give them a little bit room. What society do? Capsule living. These are the apartments I reported back in uh, Portland, Oregon. Capsule living, a cheap option for young people flocking to L.A. These reports are now, these tabs are a little bit older. Never get to them. Kay Wilson packed up her life in a hurry and moved to Los Angeles only to find that she paid in, what she paid in Pennsylvania for a nice studio apartment would not only get her two would only get her a two point nine square meter box in California. So here's the government providing an economy that requires a young woman who likely will not have children or at least planned lives in a box, folks. Lives in her own cage. She's doing that herself. She's quite fine. I guess there's not that much stress on her. You think it's going to be easier to wire for sound these little boxes and apartments, these capsules, with sensors in order to find out more about this human female animal that they need to regulate? She's choosing. I told you a long time ago, you will consent because the system will be such a point that you will have to make the decisions that will require you consent. And no one's trying to stop this. This is the same time when you look out. If you can't afford this little box at some $800 a month, you're in the street. A friend told me down in Southern California a shocking amount of money for a house. Shocking. I don't even want to say it. Shocking. She's happy. And I don't don't want to sound, don't intend this to sound, what's the word, uh, an insult. The female human is being conditioned to live in a cage of her own agreement. If you think the future that these young people are agreeing to is a future that you want when all the evidence right now is you, you can't confine people into stack them and pack them if you haven't understood where I'm going with that as well. You're not putting together, they're telling you the future and it's not a rosy picture. They are going to control, they took, it's not even cradle to grave folks, it's fertilized egg to grave. And they will determine every bit of it. Young people flocking to L.A. to live in a capsule, an apartment, as we heard in Portland. This is the stack them and pack them. And you're going to agree to it. You're going to like it. She's happy. That's fine. But to me, this is indicative of, an, of a lack of insight of what's really going on. And not many people kind of see this as going on. Now, we got these apartments, or these little bitty cube boxes. Where was that started? We heard that in Japan. This is not new. This is now you think it happened in Japan and didn't happen. No, they actually take this and apply it. They weren't joking about stack them and pack them. They're putting in little bitty cubes, just like the Japan model. Oh, they're a foot longer. You Americans are just so big because you eat so well. But we'll make do. 
the bean counters will account for that. You will put yourself, young female will put herself in this apartment, living in a, in a big building, essentially, with a bunch of apartments that is co-ed. And somehow everybody's cool with all that as well. And there's constraints on normal activity between interactions as well in all this. You just look at see the future as far as the surveillance state and how limited you have access to anything and how confined an area they have to surveil. And here's the, now more evidence of what happens when they give you the stack them and pack them and you live already existing in the normal situation in apartments. What happens with this private partnershiping that goes with the government when now you don't think a you know you don't think a doctor is private partnershiping to get the license they need to be subject to these laws that now women may or may not want to go to because of the evidence that were created they won't want to incriminate themselves yeah folks start putting a little bit of this together I didn't enter into the story in the beginning about the victory to show you oh that's a victory we can go on or it's something to look at no it it, it envelops your whole life about the violation to that, why I say the first story, the first article of victory wasn't far enough. Why you, I'm asking you and have been for years and decade or so longer because I was talking before, before I had a broadcast, take the information you find as the standards and apply them. You're going to need to do that in order to at least avoid this because if you continue to have a need, there's going to be someone to exploit it. And this is pretending and not a very good future when you finally come to what I've said, I'll do without. Whatever that means, I'll do without. If um, companies, if me media, if records, the music, not to disparage anybody that's creative this way. I wish I could do music. I wish I was more talented to do that. Uh, be a comedian, you know, do entertainment, fine. Movies. I used to shoot them, folks. Uh, movie, as uh, a cameraman. Uh, but I, if you had to wait, uh, survive on me handing you some of my energy in the form of a money, everybody would dry up and blow away except for only the people I need. And I have a suspicion if everybody else really looked at that and refined it back down to talk about putting yourself in austerity. Just doing that. Stop the nonsense. This, start, this place starts to weed itself out pretty quickly. And we start from the basics, and we start from the bottom again, re-looking at a more simplistic point. But we stop abusing ourselves or watching other people be abused. But uh, here's a, another thing for those of you living in New York as residents. Unprotected, served up to the criminals by NYPD employees. Yeah, it's a real easy to sit back and second-guess the hard work of law enforcement officers, secure and safe in our warm home so far, and from the mean streets of the thin blue line separating us from the criminal apocalypse, we have it easy. As one of the NYPD's unions pointed out, citizens like us are clueless. We've, and I'm directly quoting here, the author, quote, grown up on the nipple of what's easy, close quote, we, quote, have no clue what the NYPD officer does, quote, close quote, and yet we criticize and disparage them. Then one day, year after years of criticism and disparagement, and uh, read the tweet, nipples, we will find we need them. Evil will be at our door, says NYCPBA. Uh, uh, when that happens, we, we cop haters will call for help. We will finally recognize we need them after all when all hell breaks loose and who else is going to respond to our calls and to help them. Like, obviously, this is n not written in a way to, re to accept the thin blue line law enforcement as our saviors. When you read through the article, you find out all the things you complain about you see is wrong is actually going on. You see that the, the there's employees inside the system looking for ways to capitalize from their special place with outside outside entities they work with the attorneys to do that as well and this is your system that's set up without check and balance so while, while you're under the scrutiny now in capsules surveilled the conditioning let me put it this way, conditioning our women, men, for all you all you women haters I see in the chat sometime, for conditioning our women to make them no better than the sow that's uh, in, a, in a farm. 
and the husbandmanry that goes on in that. And our young women go into capsules and like it. And the residents that sit in these places, these cities, that are expecting protection by the cops, you don't even check in. You have no life. Why? You're living in a capsule. What, what life can you have? You get, hopefully you don't lose your capsule. These people go on the organized crime underneath the system, inside this, under the color of the system goes on. You know them when you see them, folks. This is not even military. This is just when you look out and see it's gone wrong. And I hear crickets in the world. I told you this target-rich environment. People inside the system, they'll say it's the greatest system in the world. Well, that's a, that's a conviction to my mind. If that's the best we can do, it's a conviction on the statement. It's a crime what's going on against people. What looks to serve you is serving you up. How many times have I said that? It's said right there in the title. Served up to criminals. This is the insidiousness of this thing you want to portray as a democracy. Well, what do I do? Well, you got to get involved. you got to find something that you really get, can't handle no more and say, I'm going to protect myself from that and others around me from that. You don't allow these things like unions to make these baseless ideas that will test your right of innocence, will test and justify that test without actual cause, will cause question, cause people to have their lives ruined in making discussions about whether or not someone had the right to have a passcode stated or not, why they're not, why they're there in their in your face at all under a presumption of innocence. No, uh, they'll say that they have every right to do that. Why? Because they have a, the secret, I think. They know you live in a military consequence. This is a controlled prison. And you maintain it that way because you feel you have to live in these cubicles. And you're happy for that. I, I, told, you, I told you this was going to happen. You're going to be happy to live in that cubicle. You're going to be happy to live in that sow's cage. It's all pre-wired when you get there. And upon that, they bestow the presumptions of sovereignty on this, these officials that are just corporate corporate cops. And you approach it by calling them corporate cops. Instead of more what I'm saying, look at the dialogue, look at the language, approach it that way. Move through the failures that they try to cover over by these glowing self-assessments. Understand, like a, a cop union is just a legal person, a legal association. It's just a corporation. Special interest group, like the Bar Association. Now, I just said something that's to totally not respond, you can't respond to that knowledge. But it points out where the problem could be for somebody who, who is interested to stop the nonsense. Again, as I say on Twitter, bad don't fix itself. This place is wired that bad don't fix itself, bad is in the world, and then you allow it by not responding against it. That's not my rule. And if you don't, you see what's coming down. The women are be put in capsules, no different than the sow is put, in a, put inside a cage. It, it, you can see the unintended consequence, if, if it's unintended now, after they know about it, of the ill health, the lack of condition. And then the profit taken from that condition by a third party that forced that on everybody. When we talk about surveillance and the look how easy it is to wire a capsule that you are happy to get. Absolutely no mercy. Leaked files expose how China organized mass detentions of Muslims. You want to be someone who disagrees like I am today, disagreeing with Ohio, wanting you an ectopic pregnancy to be reimplanted in your uterus? China leaked files is telling you that the government's already there doing it in another place like that that you don't recognize is happening at home. Students booked their ticket home at the end of a semester, hoping for a relaxing break for exams and a summer of happy reunions with families in China's far west. Instead, they would soon be told that their parents were gone. V gone, folks. Vanished. Relatives had vanished and neighbors were missing. All of them locked up on an expanding network of detention camps built to hold Muslim ethnic minorities. Get off the religion. If you have any 
question on a cult mandate that looks like a religion, looks like an idea contrary to the state. This is the detention camps that are already in the world set up to take care of you. They already have you walking into capsules, the young anyway. You're young, go eventually to school and come back and you're gone. Because the government heard something about you that it didn't like. And millions are dealt with, folks. And I told you, look at China because it's the way they're working out, how to work out amongst populations, how to deal with all those that don't agree with the state, whatever that means. How are you going to defend yourself? If a password in your mind is uh, to you to control, I've told you, you're getting, they're getting rid of your right to not incriminate yourself with all this censoring stuff that you agree to. Silent weapons are quiet wars. You plug yourself into these circuits. You plug yourself into the cubicle. They're pre-wired. They're looking at whatever you do. Somebody makes a decision. As impossible as it is for Ohio to declare it, they're going to insist anyway is your future. Given you stay silent. Given that the crickets win the day. You think it's a summer night, nothing going on all your life. Absolutely what, folks? No mercy. You think these Ohio Republicans and under anti-abortion? Um, remember, I'm, I condemn both parties, so don't think I'm giving air to any of them. I'm pointing something out. You think there's any mercy there? No, they're China already. Remember that little in, uh, indefinite intention thing that we had to, just heard about? Oh, it wouldn't be worked on. It wouldn't. Uh, who would go to that? Well, Trump just did one. You're a Muslim. You don't agree with you. We decide, ex executive, that you are a problem. We get to indefinitely re detain you forever. It is in the books, on the horizon. You come against a national security mandate, you vaxxers out there, you women that don't want your bodies invaded because we went to Ohio to transplant an ectopic pregnancy to your uterus so you will have the child you wanted or didn't want or had a mistake or whatever. You don't agree with what they're saying? Well, Trump just said the first president to use the Patriot Act, P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act, to detain a man forever is the news. Had to do, he wrote a cut a check to is is. Something the United States created to go do some other mayhem in the country, uh, in another country, right? Since the war of terror, it's a war uh, of terror, since the war of terror, it's a war of terror, yeah? War of terror, that's what it says. That's what I've been saying, folks. It was officially declared <laughs> 18 years ago. Uh, Ham Amin Hassoun, uh, who is in his late 50s, has spent the near majority of his life behind bars, having first been arrested on an immigration violation in June of 2002. Donald Trump has become the first president to invoke the PATIROT Act in order to detain a man behind bars indefinitely, despite the fact he completed the duration of his criminal sentence and should have been released nearly three years ago. All right, enough said. Indefinite detention's real. Trump is implementing it. I want you to consider, this was a, they focused on, on Muslim belief, and enforcing something the United States created is no different in my mind than you deciding contrary to the government at any time in the future when they start to expand what becomes a threat to the state, which is these demons. Psychopaths, if you want to reduce it one step down. Is being set up in the prior articles I've been reading about, if you rest with the information long enough to see that, instead of listening to me, call me names or whatever, or just dismiss me or think it's important or get scared, and that's it. No, you got to really think on some things here 
how it lies out, because once you see how this works, it also instructs you on what we are up against, why I come all the time to tell you this stuff. Notwithstanding all the, the delay or the hassle or the, the, the shaking the heads, the rolling of the eyes, whatever happens with what I say, even if you agree with me wholeheartedly, not taking proper action somewhere, somehow against these literal, I, I can't see it anything else, demonic action, folks. I don't know about you know getting into the Bible and being a Bible believer. Talk about Bible thumping. They're using it as a club now to force something that's not natural upon women, whether that's a physical or economic. Or, and I'm not just on women because the men are right here too. The men are also part of the equation, and we're also we're also part of not protecting the women. And boy, I say that and I see. So many people talking negatively with women. I don't know where that really came from. But anyway, it's out there. It's out there. But at any rate, we don't care. See, that's a way for us to divide ourselves. You know, I don't care about those, that, uh, what's happening to them, or they deserve it, all this other stuff. This Muslim guy, after he served his sentence in a, in a country who professes justice under law, is now being indefinitely detained for no reason. Because of his religious status and what he supported is no different in my mind again I'll say it as you having a belief that's contrary to the state on any subject matter in the near future we see absolutely no mercy in China is I don't see much different in a, in a in a the Ohio act that they want to get through that forces an impossible medical procedure to be attempted I, I don't see the difference at all uh, there's no distinction in my mind between China in, uh, in China, in, uh, in Muslims, and women in Ohio. Another thing, and it's not the only one I'll focus on, I'm just saying this is just, the, to me, the evidence that we are way past gone and needed to step up. So they're indefinitely detained. <laughs> do, do we have any salvation at all that there's any kind of accountability? I said, well, yeah, you get some accountability. If you go look at the Libra Code, look down about the middle, you start seeing a, a heinous act, so heinous that even it defends demons here. Then maybe there's a, 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 a shred of, of, of capacity to get some kind of justice. Officer charged with the felony murder, now facing seven more charges over deadly no-knock raid, which is the Houston botched raid that killed two people on a phone call from a, a neighbor who's now also going to get charges. But you look inside that, it almost looks like that was a setup. The two or three cops on the outside also shot the one cop went on the inside. Remember I just said that there's cops and stuff. There are now evidence. 911 works with the cops and the attorneys to sell out people. This case looks like that. This case is one of those the police union and the police were supporting their botched raid until it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt they couldn't support it. The embarrassment factor, not the moral consequence up front, not your rights up front. You have to press them to the wall with evidence more than your opinion. And then we get, oh, a crumb. They're going to charge the cop. Oh, a cop, a cop. Gerald Goines, already facing felony murder charges for the raid that left Regina Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle dead, claimed an informant purchased a heroin from Tuttle and saw guns in the house. To me, is no different than you finding out in New York that the inside's working with outside people in order to violate you. This is just the method of operation for the organized criminals that it, Co under color of government that you complain about. That's not government. That's organized crime. And I think that blinds us a lot of times. You don't get, so you won't get what I'm saying, but the government's no good. No, government is you and anybody else who comes to an agreement. That can be shown to be government. If you don't think that's as easy as it works, go look at mining districts. It's simple, not not real hard to get around, and there was no coercion or extortion wrapped around that. But those people certainly didn't like attorneys. But anyway, neither here nor there. So that chart, if you break, if you if you can be found, when evidence comes hard against you, like against every presumption of your innocence as a cop, you might you the one single cop might be broken down, brought down in order to face charges. Not immediate death, like your, your presumption of innocence was supposed to protect these people, which is irrit beyond irritation to me. 
I, I really start to, if I get angry at something, it'll be on this. Like it was those three black guys, 36 years in prison in a system that's supposed to profess and get everyone to agree, oh, they never do wrong, and they're the sovereign, and they do everything right, and there's a system protection. 36 years, and they were wrongly put in jail in the most, one of the most inhumane prison systems that we have in the world. And it's okay because we get to pay them off now as a society. It is not okay with me. Jeez, uh, I don't know what to say about that. Same thing here. Regina Nichols, Nicholas and Dennis Tuttle, I'm going to name them by name, were supposed to be presumed innocent. They're dead. That was the first act of government. And it was done on the same interphone, intercommunication lies and deceit for some gain to the people who are doing it. Whether that's the neighbor or whether that's the police officers themselves in promoting their drug war or whatever. Or just their internal, they, just their hatred for somebody, their dislike for you, which is why I tell you folks that are your auditors, don't push past the point to try and insult these guys. They have friends. They can find you in places when you're not prepared and don't have the protections you think you have, and they can make something up. And you don't have the protection. You keep insulting these people. They will wait for their time or set one up. And in a place that you haven't thought about. So not to say don't go out and do what you do. Go only to where you need to go. Protect yourself there. Avoid a further encounter. And don't push any further. We're not in a place like you might see in the past. That we might be able to get away without that potential future vulnerability. I guess to put that more. I've seen some more things on the internet. Just... Folks, watch how far you push it. You are up against these people. And so. So we get a little bit of guy we get a little bit of pushback, right? As long as it's violative in the con as I see it, a constant uh, it's a const um, the construct of the military force occupation. There had but there had to be enough in information that came out. You have to be those witnesses for those types of information. Why I say read this stuff to see what those things are so you can communicate in those aspects. In other words, you make yourself your 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 witness uh, your evidence relevant and material and pertinent. The, the basics for rules of evidence. And if you, I say if you do that in fr up front and you and that's where you stay, you limit the ability for the other side to take an advantage at all. And if we don't press it on a societal level, people die in their houses, folks. Even though there looks like there was even an internal uh, an internal corruption going on as well. And all of this gets gets hidden after a while. You know, we take talking about uh, we're uh, talking continue the thing about Epstein. Yeah, because they're gonna they're burying it, right? They're buried. They, we're not burying Epstein. Forget him. He's either dead or alive. He's irrelevant right now. What was relevant is the ongoing uh, crime that that it was all proven that was he was doing that lots of other people in high and low places are doing that. I tell you, my origination for all this was back in the 2000s, which I saw it in the states. And as I recently said, someone else comes four or five years later without knowing the guy finds it completely consistent with what I did, what I found. Fascinating. It's there, folks, this stuff. So the cops, if they go extending past certain things and you die and have problems, they can be held accountable, but you see it takes this evidence because they're always gathering evidence. They're always getting the evidence against you, and that's a presumption apparently uh, that's okay out in the open. I guess you lose your presumption of innocence there. That I see these stories, again, the benefit to the government, uh, underneath its various excuses, which I consider to be major felony crimes here, if not treason and sedition against the obligations and duties to serve you, not try to s set you up, Night Scope kicks off a federal government initiative. One company in Silicon Valley has got a federal national initiative going on in the government, with the government. A developer in advanced physical security technologies utilizing fully autonomous robots focused on enhancing U.S. security operations. 
announced today that it has finally formally kicked off its federal government initiative with the engagement of C5 Business Development Innovations. The C5BDI is an industrial leader in non-traditional contracting with significant experience in briefing upper echelons of the U.S. federal government, including the Pentagon Intelligence Company and U.S. military forces, providing direct subject matter expertise in navigating the challenges of U.S. federal acquisition space. Lots of mealy mouth words to say this company offers security robots with capacities to do what? They said before. It's to enhance United States security operations. The Patriot, PATRX says that you're all enemy combatants. Where do you think that they're going to, their zone of, uh, of operations are going to be, folks? Where do you think they're, they're going to be? Well, they're going to be in all the states. I mean, is that hard to figure out? And what else is going on relative to robotics? We hear Massachusetts State Police tested out Boston Dynamics, Spot, the robot dog, how quaint. Uh, civil liberties advocates want to know more. Well, uh, just, just civil liberty advocates, folks, all of y'all should be wanting to know more. Here's the thing that, that catches me. Remember now, the cops jump into a house and they shoot you. They use these robots. There's no cop. They still shoot you. They don't have to suffer their internal crime being exposed, do they? So I see a little bit more on this, and there's more to say. I don't have the time to talk about it all. Boston Dynamics, an uh, uh, offshooter of, of Google at some point, if not, they're still there, they're still in the game, whatever, the, is doing these robots that go walk around. They're fascinating technology, but again, the head on this dog looks more like the were the world's serpent that come out of the spacecraft to go interrogate the basement in one picture. Uh, the uh, they These are going to be robots that are in the place of cops that go running from room to room, if you will, to hunt people down with whatever t capacities they are that will be tied, likely tied in, because Google is tied in with the military as well, which you see this C5 BDI is also tied in to bring this robotic technology in the, the war of terror against you, right? What they call this U.S. government's security things. And then you see this story, uh, facial recognition robocops see through our clothes and listen to our phone calls. Now, uh, they, they mention night scopes robots. The ones they just talk about is a national security thing, uh, imperative apparently, that they're robots. Remember, I reported on these before that they were around in your public areas. They're now telling us that they do what you can get the same thing that you can see see through clothes uh, like the TSA. It's all the same kind of condition. All right, so these robots are not a joke. They're in the public sphere. You have no innocence here. Their technologies are beyond, I mean, maybe even our uh, anticipation. But here it is in the news. Okay? These uh, robots are roving TSA centers that are collecting information beyond your senses. Okay, so that's the foe that we have now invading your land. Underneath this demonic rule, it seems, as I broke into the broadcast. Remember, thank you for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com and bring, allowing me to bring the broadcast to everybody. And uh, Jules at UCY.TV, thank you for uh, simulcasting it and reposting it. And Sound Minds and all you folk over there, thank you for uh, your, your input. I eventually get over to see it a couple of days from now, but I appreciate that. And I'll be with you next week. Tick diffs are nature willing. That's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs> 